Welcome back. Now, for the last decade, the agriculture sector has been heavily subsidized as government pursued a paradigm shift from subsistence farming to commercial farming. But this year's budget could spell doom and gloom for the ordinary man, especially the farmer. Taxes will be imposed on agriculture products such as milk, fertilizers, machinery and cereals, which according to experts will likely affect the poor and widen the income gap. To discuss this further is Dr. Patrick Wakil an economist and researcher. Good evening, Dr. Wakida. Good evening. It's nice to have you back on Talk of the Nation today. Thank you. <laughs> we'll get right into the discussion. Now, this year's budget seems to reflect Uganda's non-compliance with the Maputo Declaration on Agriculture and Food Security, which requires that 10% of our budget should go to the vital sector of agriculture. Yes. What would you say is the rationale of not implementing this policy? You see, desperate times required, requires desperate, desperate measures. measures. Um, I've had people discuss this budget, and, and I'm asking myself whether they are looking at the objective of the budget. A budget is an instrument that can be used by the government, it can be used as a physical policy instrument. It can be used as a, an economic policy. The question we have, and everybody is asking, was this an economic policy budget? Is it a physical budget? Um, if you, you deeply look at this budget, you begin to see the tax and spend budget. Yes. Not necessarily an economic policy budget. An economic policy budget must be that one which directs the basic economic principles. It addresses that basic pr economic principles. Why are you taxing? Are you taxing to raise revenue? Are you taxing to redirect resources? Are you taxing to reduce the income gap, which you've been talking about? Or okay. are you taxing to grow certain economy? That should be the, the question. But this budget by all threads, if you look through it, you see a budget that is intended to raise revenues, to be spent. It's not intended to redirect any kind of economic policy. It's not. And how different is this budget from previous budgets? You see, the, the previous budgets um, provided incentives for certain sectors to grow. True. It also provided elements to squeeze certain sectors to allow resources to be distributed across the different uh, the different individuals those who have more and those who have less this budget in fact should have been a budget for 2012 it's the budget we should have had in 2012, in 2012. 2013 that's a budget that must reflect an inflation a position of an e of a country aimed at reducing you know, reducing money from the economy. Because by 2012, we had an inflation up to 30% resulting from the elections. So there was too much money. And we needed a, bu a budget like this one to suck that money out of the economy. Now, if you bring this kind of budget and you tax every aspect of life of a public, then you are demonstrating the element of disparatism that you must get the money anyway. So we are a, we are, we are a country in a very desperate time. It's, it's, it's a desperate time. Does it have to do with the donors uh, yes. pulling back some of their funds? Uh, that's okay. one of them. Uh, but also the government wants to demonstrate that they can fund up to 80%. But of can them. the government really fund up to 80% of the budget? That's you what think? they have told the public. Okay, so I that, don't that's want something to we're going I to have to see. I don't want to accuse, to, accuse, to accuse anybody in government for having lied. But I also know that we haven't reached the capacity to even to fund 70% of our own budget. So we should really brace ourselves. Yes. Now, there is a host of new taxes which will target the already limping agriculture sector, a sector that obviously enjoyed tax breaks before. Why are we seeing government deciding to heavily tax this sector, which is really the backbone of our economy? I, you see, like I told you, th there is disparism. The government wants to see that every aspect of, of individual and economy is contributing the basket to the to, to the tax to the budget. The challenge there is that should you look at the tax as an end in itself, 
then you stifle the economy. Because you should be giving a tax holiday to an agricultural sector so that it can grow to be able to, you know, to give more revenue in the future. Unfortunately, this current budget is aimed at receiving revenue. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to ask you one question. Where 73% or so of the population are, are working, the, the government should be working to support that sector to grow. True. By way of incentives, by way of tax holidays, on inputs, on fertilizers, those things that can help the sector grow. On machinery, I had I had uh, Honorable Kiwanuka proudly saying, we are going to tax machinery, agricultural machinery. Now, let me tell you, people talk of uh, agricultural growth and, and development. It does not mean production alone. It means that the, the majority of population are moving away from producing mm -hmm. to processing. That there is both a backward and a forward linkage. That people are starting to industrialize in the culture. So you have people moving away from the village and joining those industry so that you provide the, the, the market for the products these people are producing. Now, should you begin to tax a younger economy like that of agriculture, then you are keeping people in that sector. Because, uh, let me tell you, people, uh, the importers of machinery are not bothered. Because what they will do is they will pass on the They'll tax. They will just pass on the tax to, to In economics, we call that the final resting place of a tax, the instance of a tax. You will be the one to pay for it. Now, if I was planning to set up a small factory mm -hmm. in my village, then I am stifled. Because I will not be able to afford that. Or the people will not be able to consume the product I'm producing. So uh, I don't know, first of all, I have to understand what's the objective of this budget. <laughs> because the, 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 the most important thing for people to understand is the, the government, after developing, using the budget, okay. or they're after having the money to run the country. And, 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 and when you look at this budget, <laughs> in fact, they are looking for money to run the country. To be able to run the country yes. day to day. Not necessarily to develop. Okay. That's what we see. Now, Uganda's hyperinflation is largely triggered by soaring food prices. And now, obviously, we're seeing taxes such as these. Is it not counterproductive? Yes, we're desperate, but is it not counterproductive? Because it's likely to push food prices up. And then the economy is yeah, going to go into you chaos. See the drivers of Where is the economics, the, despite the, dri the desperation? <laughs> the drivers of, of an economy, the drivers of an economy are fewer. For my grandmama to bring to bring food from Antungama to here, you'll need transport. But True. I want to tell you that the middleman who has bought that matoke to come to Kampala will calculate every bit of the money spent on the fuel to put on a bunch of matoke, to put on the kilo of posho. So you will find that the prices of goods and services go up. Now when they go up, you must have provided an economy that gives the public the money to be able to purchase expensive commodities. If not, then you'll find commodities in the market, but without people buying them. Which is going to be the likely, the likely Well, situation. I can't predict. I, I, Ugandans are good at spending, and I'm very sure they'll spend. <laughs> I saw the teachers given, uh, given an, increment an increment of about 43,000 shillings. That money is going to be spent on paraffin. <laughs> <laughs> you see? So you have not added any value. You have given somebody uh, this bunch of money, uh, which we call the, 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 nominal, the nominal money. Mm -hmm. But what's the real money in it? How much of goods and services can that money purchase? That is it. That's, I think that's the, 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 what the teachers should be looking at. Not how much they will go with, but how much can they purchase using that uh, particular particular in a particular amount of money given to them which probably explains why uh, some member of par some members of parliament have described this budget as anti-development and definitely anti anti people yeah you, you see they haven't known the objective now if the members of parliament <laughs> do not understand the objective how is the ordinary man expected yes. to understand the objective you, you, of the budget? you see the framers of this budget uh, they said um, 
keeping the momentum. <laughs> and, and when, and when uh, the, the Minister of Finance was saying maintaining the momentum, I was asking myself, which one? In the previous budget, you said you've given this amount of money for a youth. In the next budget, you don't even mention about it. Did you see that money? They have not. You come up and say, I've given the teachers an increment of 20% uh, of or so. But the price on goods and services consume that amount of money. That's true. So it, it, it defeats the very essence for which you, 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 you are introducing certain things. And, and, and I think these, these brothers of mine in, in Parliament should, first of all, understand that desperate times requires desperate, desperate measures. measures. And, and the government probably is trying to, to find all the ways of, of getting the amount of money. And, you know, most of these tax, if you look at, is an indirect tax. So they will That's be able true. to collect it anyway. That's true. Yes. Okay, let's, um, let's turn to something else. Uganda enjoys a comparative advantage in agriculture in the region in general. We have rich soils, but we seem not to be able to realize the much flaunted food basket success story. Where do you think we're falling short? You see, Uganda's population first is, is so big. You cannot mechanize okay. agriculture in some, in some parts of, of the country. I, I normally give an example of, of, of my father's land. My father was alone. He had about five acres. Now he produced another eight guys. Each of then them must be given a share. Yes. So you can't mechanize. Now until there is uh, a land, uh, a land uh, policy that allows people to stay in certain places and allow certain part of the land to be used for agriculture, you cannot mechanize. Two, we only depend on the rains in Uganda. Despite the fact that we have water, w water surrounding us, we only depend on that. Three, there are some places that have become no good land. Mm -hmm. You need fertilizers. Now, when, it, when such a situation is there, and the budget is saying, we will tax the fertilizers, <laughs> then you are not reading from the same text I'm reading. Yes, you see that. So yes. those are the challenges. We have enough food. When, when you go to Barara, for example, around this time, you know how much matok it is there? It's quite a lot, isn't it? But this is the bumper season. That matok can never be stored. Now, a farmer in Barara who is only focusing on matok, what will happen when the matok season ends? They have nothing to they fall back on. They have nothing to sell. That's the problem. So we, we probably we need also to start looking at what crops can somebody grow that can allow that person to continuously have food in the household without necessarily sticking on rice, sticking on matoke. I, in my village, people grow rice. They used to have millet and the peas, but people now go on to this labor-intensive rice growing. Mm -hmm. So you find that the person has gotten four bags of rice in a season, and he will sell for a three and remain with one. For home consumption. For home consumption. And the rice used to be eaten in the evening. So it means that they will not have lunch. <laughs> what do you mean by it used to be eaten in the evening? <laughs> rice is a food for evening. You it's can't have it at lunch time. It, it used to be. It used to be a supper in a supper meal. You know? Now, that's a very big challenge, by the way. Okay. Uh, because in my village, I've gone to people and I've told them, please go back to the dry land. Grow your maize, grow your millet, grow your peas, the beans that we used to have, and then grow rice. But, you know, rice is very labor intensive. Yes, that it certainly is. They no longer grow cassava. That used to be. You know? Because they are only looking at the cash crop, one which will bring in some revenue. And you can't entirely blame them, can you? You, you can't. You can't. Because they need money to, you know, to go to the hospitals. They need to money pay to, to fees, pay school fees in one Which in now is also aspects. going to go higher. Uh, but they will require a lot of sensitization. When I hear people talk about NADS, I'm wondering what are they, what's NAD, NADS doing? They are giving people chicken, which I used to receive when I went to my grandmom's place. I, did you visit your grandparents? Yes, I did. What happened? They gave you an egg or they gave you a chicken? Yes. Now, that one is being given in the form of, in the form of development. <laughs> It's, those are the challenges we have faced, that there has been a lot of politicization of economic policies that should have benefited the public. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. 
you don't need to give somebody a cow to develop. You only, need to, yeah, you only need to provide somebody an incentive in a situation that can allow that person be able to buy himself or herself a cow. Now, if you are going to give cows in a population of, of, of 38 million, you need 38 million cows. Yes. Assume me. So you don't need that. And I think that's the biggest challenge. Uh, some regions, we've been feeding Southern Sudan. But let me tell you, should Southern Sudan receive peace, they will be able to feed themselves. Because <laughs> they, have, they have one of the most fertile soil. You know that, uh, the equatorial region, yes. uh, northern Uganda and, and southern Sudan, that's a very, very fertile soil. Interesting. Yeah. I have to cut this conversation short, Dr. Wakida. Thank you, thank you so much for Th joining us. Th thank you very much, Rukshana. And... Uh, Let's, let's, let's accept to pay the tax. We will pay the tax, <laughs> but we will be watching to see where the money goes. Well, th the roads will be constructed and we'll get some money during the election. And the health sector, I hope, oh, will I be hope addressed so. as well. Yeah. That was Dr. Patrick Wakida joining us on Talk of the Nation to look at the budget from the eyes of the ordinary man.